at the end of the first part of this video lecture, I posed this question to you. And if you're in my course and doing this through Moodle, you already know that the correct answer is B. The friction force by the floor and the force that you exert on the filing cabinet are exactly matching in magnitude. That's why the acceleration is zero and the cabinet does not move. The key thing is that the frictional force behaves like a spring force. It adjusts its size to be just right. It's exactly the same as the situation we were seeing with the block on the incline, that as we increase the slope of the incline and the size of the component vector of gravity pointing down the slope increases, so the static friction also has to increase. It increases just to the point that the acceleration is zero, and so it always matches that down, that down slope component of the gravitational force. Let's return to the block on the slope and now think about the situation as the block starts to slide. And so we're going to focus on these two situations where note that I've indicated in that, that in this one, the angle of the slope is less than, but very similar to theta max. So we're just below the angle at which the block starts to slide. And now in this picture, the angle of the incline is greater than and very similar to theta max. So we're just a little bit bigger than theta max. So in this situation, the block is still stationary, its acceleration is zero, and that's because the friction force and the downslope component vector of the gravitational force are exactly balancing each other. And then for an ever so slightly larger angle, all of a sudden the block starts sliding and it's accelerating. And let's think about what that tells us about the frictional force. So again, we're going to take this free body diagram and I'm going to resolve the gravitational force, decompose the gravitational force into components down the slope and perpendicular to the slope. And let's focus on the part parallel to the slope. Now, the kinetic friction no longer balances the x component vector of the gravitational force, and that is why the block slides down the slope and accelerates. But think about that carefully, because we've hardly changed the angle theta at all, and so this component vector of the gravitational force has hardly changed, and yet we see an acceleration down the slope. If it had just changed and the frictional force had remained the same, we would expect to see an extremely small acceleration down the slope. But we don't. When we actually measure it, it's not all that small. And what that tells us is that aside from the gravitational force component down the slope getting ever so slightly larger, the main effect is that the friction just got smaller. In other words, this kinetic friction that acts between the block and the surface once the block starts sliding is weaker than the static friction that was acting between them just a moment before, before the block started to slide. Unlike static friction, which opposes other forces in order to prevent slipping from happening, kinetic friction opposes relative motion of surfaces. So when two surfaces are sliding relative to each other, there is a kinetic friction that tends to act in a direction that would stop the sliding. I'll explain why that kinetic friction is weaker than the static friction force that it replaced in a little while, and we'll also, in a later lecture, see how we describe that difference in terms of things that we call coefficients of friction. But for now, I just want you to think about a much simpler situation with kinetic friction to make sure that you understand it. So here's another question to think about. Suppose you're pushing the filing cabinet now at constant velocity. You got it moving and you're pushing it across the floor at constant velocity. And you stop pushing very suddenly. Perhaps as filing cabinets tend to do, it's given you a pinch and you've jumped back and stopped pushing. So now think about the free body diagram while you were pushing and the free body diagram just after you stop, at the instant after you stop.
and choose between the pairs of free body diagrams and the descriptions under them. So again, if you're doing this on Moodle, Moodle will ask you this question and it won't let you go on until you get it right. 